Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and I got a little problem that I need to solve, and that is, ever since I moved the Robo 3D over with its own controller, I don't have to have a laptop sitting here anymore. So I've got this big open chunk of space on my desk, and that's just gonna bug the hell out of me. I need to fill it with something. Yeah, you know, guys, I'm thinking the contents of this box will fit nicely. Screw you, first world problems. Anyways guys, there it is, Ultimaker V2. Special thanks to Sander Ultimaker for making this happen. God, I've been wanting this thing so bad. If you guys haven't seen the Ultimaker before, this is an Ultimaker V1. This is the very first Ultimaker that the company made. Yes, it looks like it's made out of plywood, because it, it is. And it does look like it was made in a shed, because it probably was. But that's besides the point. What makes this one kick ass is it has a massive speed. This thing can print, it like just, eye-wrenching speeds dude it's awesome if you haven't seen my other videos go check them out but it's one loud as hell and two it doesn't have a heated bed and heated beds are important to 3d printing they just are they make life so much easier so ultimaker went and kept improving 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 and now they've got the v2 and that's what's in this box and i've, I've already seen pictures of it before i even take out the box i can tell you it's pretty prepare yourself it's a thing of art all right, this sucker's too big to unbox on the big desk, so we're just gonna do it right here on the floor. Using my scissors. I can never find the damn pocket knife. All right. Let's have a peek. All right, and the first thing we see when we open the top of the box is we have a roll of magenta PLA. That's awesome. And we have a roll of blue PLA. God, it's hard to hold this camera while doing this. And a power cable on top. That's really cool. Let's go ahead and pull that out, set it aside, and there she is. Oh, Bungie Studios, please don't sue me for singing the Halo song in every one of my videos. All right, it's time for this beauty to come out of the box. Ta-da! Hey, Robo 3D, no hard feelings, buddy. I just need to. Uh, take you down for a little while. All right, guys, here it is. Sitting right next to its brother, V1 and the V2. This is awesome seeing these two guys together. I've been waiting a really, really long time for this. Now, one thing you'll notice is it's packaged extremely well. If you go back to the video where I unboxed the original Ultimaker, there were some packaging problems and some things got shifted around. It looks like the way they're packing this now is just very, very nice. This is awesome. I also like immediately looking at it that the whole thing, I mean, it looks nice. It's all white. It looks like it's cut from like plexi or a heavy material. And it's got the controller built right into it. And it looks like it has a two gigabyte SD card included. I like that it's all integrated, the jog dial. Whereas over here, it was a separate module that attached with ribbon cables. Looks like this box just pulls right up out of the top. And got this cover. We can pull that out. Looks like they placed cardboard inside to protect all the all the important stuff. It also looks like, let's see here, it looks like they put some zip ties on some things. They've wrapped the little poles and rods. That's cool. Oh man, that is epic. So I can tell looking at it, the glass, the, the glass that goes on the heated bed is actually pinned down below underneath so that it doesn't get damaged in shipping. We'll pull that out in a moment. It also looks like there's a zip tie here that can actually be trimmed or removed. So we'll go ahead and take care of that too. But just looking at the machine, it's awesome. I like that the sides are closed in because that'll help keep your heat in um, a little bit better. And, uh, and, and I love the way that they use like metal shrouds back here to hide the motors and to reduce the noise. Um, it's definitely a lot cleaner of a design. You can see they've got like these little custom things for the wire loom to go through. Whereas on the old one, it was just kind of wrapped around a bundle of wires. It's definitely a huge refinement. Now the overall design looks very similar other than the controller being integrated and also I 3D printed feet. That's why this is a little taller, but it also looks like just looking at the design, it looks like the same 3D printed feet would fit on this. The, the dimensions are still the same on the corners and that's really, really cool. It looks like they shaved a lot of weight off this print head. The print head now has two fans on it. That is just really, really cool. But unfortunately, it looks like one fan was damaged 
uh, in transport. I'll have to check the box and see if it's in there. But the fan's easy enough to replace that I'm not too worried about it. After looking in the box, I did find at the bottom the little piece of fan and where it broke off. So it was obvious that in shipment it got jarred and, uh, and something got broke off. But to be honest with you, I've never received anything from DHL that doesn't have some kind of problem with it. I mean, it's... God, DHL don't even get me started on those guys. I love the way the hot end looks. This is, this is just very, very slick looking. Um, you can definitely tell there's a huge improvement there, and I like that it has a heat sink on it and everything like that. This is just a much, much better design. Looks like it's a hell of a lot easier to take apart, too, because it looks like everything's custom lightweight plastic now instead of that plywood, which is very heavy. All right, let's bring the heated bed up, shall we? Twist in the screw in the back. So there's our piece of glass right there, all wrapped in bubble wrap that goes on the heated bed. And if you look, the heated bed has these little clips on it. They just swing out. That's a really cool design. So you can easily remove the build platform. I absolutely love that. And it is it is a heated build platform. And I love the way that they did the loom and everything so it's out of the way. It is a very slick looking platform. It looks like you can level the bed by turning the screws under the platform. I like that a lot better than having to use a tool like I had to with the old one. There's a side profile view. You can see it's, it's I mean, it's really cool. It's like, it's like I don't know what this is, Lexan or some kind of plastic. Um, it definitely has some heft to it. And then here they got a little arrow showing you where to insert the material into the feeder. The feeder looks like it's much smaller. The feeder on the old Ultimaker was huge. And it even looks like it has some room for additional expansion. If you see, there's another place over here to mount another stepper motor, but a very clean design. If you turn around the old Ultimaker, you can see this is one of the extruders. I have dual extrusion I installed on there, but you can see the extruders are huge and they stick out this way. I like that this one's in nice and tight to the unit so you can put it much closer to a wall. All right, let's go ahead and insert the glass bed. You just slide it back. The clips look like they're, uh, they're pressure foot. It slides in nice and tight. And you just slide these front ones out like that. Push it down, clip it into place. It does snap and make a popping noise when it connects. And there you go, you have a glass platform. Really easy to swap out. The whole surface is heated. Really, really love the design on this, guys. And drop it down. Also in the box, we got a full color manual. Now that is really cool. The other one didn't come with uh, as nice of a manual. And it looks like we got some stuff. We have, uh, let's see, list your printer, 3D printer for others, 3dhubs.com. It's got a card for that. Uh, let's see here, the new Ultimaker V2. It's got a card in there that you can probably give to your friends. And it's got a bunch of stickers that you can put on everything. That's awesome. I'm going to put a bunch of stickers on my V1. And then, uh, of course, the manual itself, which if you're not familiar with 3D printing and Cura, Oh wow, it's got pictures, it shows you, you know, it gives you illustrations on how to level everything and how to calibrate it. That is really sweet. Check out the power supply on this thing, guys. It's uh, 24 volt at 9.2 amps, 221 watts. That is a beefy power supply, because of course you got to take into account now it has a heated bed, so it needs a lot more power. So there's the power brick, let's go ahead and get this plugged in. Also, just really quick guys, it came with a test print that shows you like how well it was able to print because um, they check each printer before they mail it out and this print actually looks really good. The symmetry on it's good. It also came with a bag of goodies here and the bag of goodies includes it's got a spool holder for the back, a glue stick because you can use glue on the heated bed to actually get things to adhere better. It came with lubricant for uh, I'm guessing the drives and the bars, a USB cable, um, it also came with another part that, uh, I don't know, I might have to look at the manual for that one, guys. I don't, I don't know what that one is. And a couple of Allen keys. Alright, guys, moment of truth, firing it up for the first time. Ooh. Oh, my God. Wow, look at that lighting. That is going to be so awesome for videos. It's got custom LED strips all the way down the side, across the top, and down the bottom. So just look how well lit that is. That is epic. Man, I can't get over how well lit that is. That is awesome. All right, so it says right down here on the screen, it says, Welcome to your first startup of your Ultimaker. Press the button to continue. Ooh, it's got a loud beep, too. Because this is your first startup, I will walk you through a first-run wizard. Oh my god, that moves fast. Whoa. After transportation, we need to do some adjustments. We are now going to do that now. Alright. 
It says rotate the button until the nozzle is a millimeter away from the build plate. That is cool, guys. That looks about right. Okay, turn the left build plate screw till the nozzle is a millimeter away from the build plate. Okay. Okay, repeat this step, but now use a sheet of paper to fine-tune the, the build plate levels. We're good? It's got one screw on the bottom that controls the back. Oh, this is such a better system than the V1. We're good? All right, so now it's time to load material. All right, guys, I already got a roll of silver material that was open, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. Let's go ahead and slide it on. It's really cool. It actually has a mechanism now to stop it from coming off, and it clips on. Very, very cool. Although I put it on upside down. It used to be like that. All right, and the material you just insert through the little hole here on the bottom. All right, guys, I've inserted the material. It says it was heating the print head. It says, Inter insert the material from the rear of your Ultimaker above and then press above the arrow. Okay. Okay, loading material. All right, it says, push the button when material starts to extrude from the print head. So now we just have to wait. All right, guys, we have material. All right, guys, here we go. I can feel the heat radiating off the bed. The bed's warming up. So I'm going to use the glue, but just to let you guys know, you can also use hairspray. Holy cow, this thing is quiet. I can't even barely hear it running from behind the camera. The other printer was so much louder. I don't know how they got it so quiet. I mean, guys, you're hearing me on the same microphone that's pointed right at the printer right now. It's dead silent. This thing could run in my bedroom. Look, I'm seriously right here and I'm whispering, hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? I'm 3D printing something and you'd never know it. The LCD gives a really nice readout, too. Tells you how much longer your print has to take. Gives you a little progress indicator. That is so cool. Alright guys, here's the first print off the Ultimaker V2. Now you can notice it's a little it's got a little bit of distortion up the sides, and it's a little warped on this side. You can see it's it's warped on that side, but on this side it's nice and clean. The ears clean, the arms clean, the connections clean. The reason for that is because of the broken fan. The fan that was damaged in shipment. Um, actually prevented enough cooling to hit the material to solidify it. It's really important with 3D printers that you have a lot of cooling on the print head because as soon as that material comes out, it's very, very hot and it's like a liquid and you need it to become solid very, very quick after laying down. And especially on a printer like this where it has a heated bed where the material's being kept a certain temperature so it doesn't contract, you're constantly fighting that force. So I'm confident after using this printer that it's going to print beautifully. I can already tell by how the print head's moving everything it's just unfortunate that one of the fans got damaged in transport i mean it happens honestly have you ever gotten anything from dhl that didn't have some kind of problem but seriously ultimaker has the best support ever i already sent a mail this morning they already have another replacement fan on the way but it was so quiet printing this out it's it's amazing you could literally set this thing up in your bedroom and it's not going to keep you up all night you could do some really long prints on it
Well, there you have it, guys, the Ultimaker V2. Again, I'm sorry that I couldn't get you guys a really high detailed print out of it, but until I get that fan fixed over here on the side of the print head, it's not going to produce good prints for the simple reason that you really need those fans blowing all the way around to provide that cooling so that that material solidifies the instant it comes out. If it doesn't, you tend to get some deformations as I just showed you moments ago. Uh, but that fan is going to be incredibly easy to replace. I already contacted Ultimaker and they have a replacement on the way. I just wish DHL wouldn't play soccer with the boxes <laughs> when it's on its way over. I swear they just throw it in the back of an airplane and go... Nyr, nyr, nyr. But anyways, I'm glad everything else made it here in one piece. Um, the biggest thing that I really, really noticed between the new one and the old one is refinement. This one, just the way the print head's assembled and everything like that, there's not this plywood. Everything is super, super sturdy. I like that you have the controller on the front here. It's a graphical interface instead of just text. And you can flip through, you can select material types. You can do the full calibration of the printer using the onboard computer. So no more having to hook up a USB cable to calibrate the print head. I really, really like that. And it's a much more user-friendly design. If you open up Cura and you select Ultimaker 2, uh, you don't have to set a lot of the options. You don't have to set the material temperature, the bed temperature, any of that stuff. It's all set automatically. Now you can override it if you want, but it just makes it easier for somebody who's never done 3D printing before to basically put on a spool of material and it just works. And I love the way it feeds material on the back. Uh, that, the way that it loads and ejects the material to change it, completely awesome. That was, that was thank you Ultimaker, that was really, really cool. The other machine required a lot more manual fidgeting and stuff to get things right. And I noticed that on the old one, you had to adjust the build platform on just about every print just to get it perfectly dialed in. This thing just, it, it stays calibrated. You know, you guys only saw that I printed the robot, but I also did a couple of other like little tiny just tests, not really printing anything, but just moving the print head around and homing the machine. And it always went back perfect and the distance between the print head and the build platform was perfect. Also, I noticed the print head heats up a lot faster. I don't know if that was an intended effect that they had with the new one, but the old one seemed like it took forever to heat up. This one heats up much quicker. So guys, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them down below. And don't worry, next week, once I get the new fan installed on the print head, we're going to really put this thing through its paces in a whole nother series of videos. So guys, I hope this video gave you a nerdgasm. Till next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.